So a few years ago, a friend invited me to an anime convention with her. I'd never been to one before and excitedly said yes. On the way, I asked her what a first timer needed to know. What was the etiquette? How much did artists usually charge? Would there be any of those gross furries? That kind of thing. She told me there were basically three things to know. One, ask before you take someone's picture. Two, avoid the people holding free hug signs. And three, watch out for what she termed followers. I was about to ask her what this meant, but we had arrived at the hotel and had a mad scramble to get checked in on time and help her and her other friend get into their costumes. So it went unanswered. For a while, at least. Later on, we finally hit the convention center. We're walking in and looking around, and she leans over to me and nods towards a shortish fatty with a blue streaked blonde bowl cut. As if he'd noticed across the room, he stares at my friend and me. See him? She whispered. Hardcore follower. I found out the hard way what she meant. As I glanced up later during a conversation with some other cosplayers I'd met, I saw him standing off a ways, staring. Again. I met his eyes and looked away. He gave this inexplicably creepy vibe and I didn't want to encourage him. Assuming it must be coincidence. Maybe he'd overheard us talking and decided to eavesdrop. It's whatever. But then later it happens again. I'm sitting in a panel. Feel something rustle over beside me. Glancing over, it's him. I escape to the dealer's room. Look up and he's a few booths away. Staring. Headed to the artist's alley. He's a few tables down. This time making slightly more of an effort to blend in. I join in an impromptu dance party in the ballroom and realize he's weaving his way through the crowd, damn near filling me up a couple of times. At one point, I go out to the lobby, thinking being more in the open might make him rethink things and leave me alone. Nope. He comes right up to me, doesn't say a word, just sits down next to me and stares. I eventually meet back up with my friends, and a friend who brought me looks around and says, Don't look now, but follower boy is watching you. I told her, I know he has been all day. The next day, I stick with my friend and her friend until in the afternoon I get a headache and decide to go back to the hotel room to get some ibuprofen. Now, this particular venue has the convention center separated from the hotel next door by a narrow little bridge over a small creek. I don't think twice about it until I go to walk across and he's standing there, just staring, not saying a word, grinning like he knows I have to pass him to get to where I'm going. I don't move, thinking maybe I'm wrong and he's just crossing the bridge. But nope, he doesn't move until my friend appears. Then he heads back into the hotel. She takes me by a different route back to the room, though later on we hear him tromping around in the hallway. Finally, he takes her enlisting the help of some of the big, scary-looking cosplayers I'd befriended before to t- make him back off. I don't know what they said or did to get him to stop, but frankly, I kind of hope it was painful. My mother told me this story of, about a couple years ago, around the time of her 30th high school reunion. She told me that she had an odd moment of deja vu at the event. I needed to talk to someone about it, and she believed I was old enough to hear her story. During her time in high school, my mom was the quintessential popular kid. Captain of three sports, beautiful ballet dancer, dating a quarterback, etc. Always weird to hear about my mom at this age, considering I was quite the opposite. She had many friends, although many of whom she was not too close with. One of our closer friends, however, would always joke about one kid in their class and how he was in love with my mom. My mom apparently had no idea because he never spoke to her, and I guess he was a very shy, so she never thought of it as a concern. During her senior year, however, he was hired at the construction company my grandpa owned. My mother's house was in the process of being renovated, and she began to see the kid more and more because he was assigned to work on the roof. One day, when she was alone at the house, 
She was in the bathroom, and she noticed that the lighting structure above the shower had been removed. She figured that it must have broken, and her dad or someone had taken it out, but it left a couple of small holes that went all the way to the surface above, the attic. As she left the bathroom and walked down the hall, she heard faint footsteps above her, mirroring her own. She freaked and ran out of the house to wait at a nearby friend's house until her parents returned home from work. She told her dad about it, and my grandpa went to check the attic. Sure enough, he could see straight down the shower through the missing light fixture that he did not remove. It gets worse. A hole had been drilled right above my mom's bed. Although she believed it was the kid from school, my grandpa did not believe that there was enough evidence that because more than one worker had been at the house. But he nonetheless called off the renovation of the house for a couple of weeks odd, but unthreatening things began to occur. However, as the kid's car could be seen parked across the street for long periods of time, and also at her dance, her sport practices in the parking lots outside, before she mentioned to her parents that this was becoming uncomfortable, matters took a turn for the dark. My mom grew up in a suburban town in eastern Washington, So, while it seemed crazy to me when she said that her family rarely locked their doors, she lived in a different time and in a different area, where the crime rate was limited to a rare and petty occurrence. One night, my mother woke up to a strange noise in her room. Without moving or opening her eyes, she sensed that someone was in the bed with her. She became paralyzed with fear and disgust when she realized that the sounds she was woke up to was the sound of masturbation. She rolled over, away from him, as she pretended to keep sleeping. He reached out and began to hold her from behind, and she bolted out of the bed into her parents' room, screaming, Someone's in my bed! My grandpa immediately ran to my mom's room, and the door slammed in his face. There were no windows or any other kinds of exits in her room, so when he kicked in the door, the kid just gave up and sat on the floor. The worst part is, and my mom's voice was full of bitterness when she said it, was that my grandparents felt sorry for the kid. So instead of filing a report, they told his parents what had happened and recommended psychologists and treatment. The parents of the boy promised he would not be a disturbance any longer. Although understandably shaken up, my mom soon would go to college and completely forget about the kid. That is, until her high school reunion. He was there. Not only did he greet my mom and introduce himself to my dad, he introduced his wife. He married a girl that was in their graduating class, and they have several children together. Whether he's completely rehabilitated or still fantasizes over my mother, I don't know. But to my mom's creepy and power tool savvy stalker, let's not meet. A lot of weird things happened to me, but this event has got to be the strangest and most terrifying. This happened a while ago when I was 16. At this point in time in my life, I was having some trouble at home. I kept on getting into fights with my sister and dad, and I was just in general really angsty and depressed. What really helped remedy all of my tensions were the long nightly walks I went on around my neighborhood. I found these walks the perfect setting for some peace of mind and much-needed deep thinking. On one particularly stressful night, I decided to go out on one of my walks. It was around two o'clock or so in the morning, so both my sister and my dad were sound asleep, which was perfect for me because I knew they'd try to stop me from going out if they were awake. It was mid-May, so it was fairly warm outside, perfect walking weather I thought at the time. I grabbed my hoodie and went out the door and on my way. My usual walk routine was to go up several blocks to the local park and then back again. The park wasn't exactly close to my house, but it wasn't too far either. It usually took me about 20 to 30 minutes to walk there and back. So there I was. I noted on this particular night, the sky was remarkably clear. The moon was nearly full and very bright. 
I thought to myself that I didn't even need the street lights. I could see almost perfectly just from the light of the moon. Little did I know that this fact would save my life. I had been walking for about ten minutes and was turning a street corner when I saw him. On the other side of the street, walking in the opposite direction of me, was a man. At first, I simply ignored him, because the street I was walking up on was what I thought at the time a safe one. But there was one thing that stuck out about him. He was wearing a suit. You know, one of those fancy-looking ones. The kind you pull out for special occasions. Seeing how it was two in the morning, I thought this was really, really weird. I watched him as I walked, and to be honest, I didn't care if he noticed. I was too fascinated by him. He walked briskly, as if he was in a hurry. He didn't look up once, just kept staring at the ground. As he passed by me, I gave one glance at him, then turned my gaze back around to in front of me. I thought that would be the last I'd see of him. I smiled and shook my head a bit as I continued on, imagining the different scenarios that could explain the strange man in the suit. I was about halfway up the street, about to turn the corner, when I heard an incredibly loud smashing sound behind me. I jumped about three feet in the air and turned around, heart racing. Barely fifteen feet away from me was the man. He was standing perfectly still and straight, and he was staring straight at me. He knocked over, or I should say kicked over, some tin garbage cans that were there, which explains the crashing noise. There were two beats of silence, then he spoke. Oh dear. His voice was soft and calm, and he had a British accent. For whatever reason, that surprised me a lot. It seems I've made a mess. He then laughs a little, looking at the trash spilled out everywhere on the ground. Then he looked back up at me, still smiling. Do you mind helping me clean it up? I don't want to get into trouble for littering and such. He laughed again, this time louder, and it made me shudder back in fear. No thanks, is what I managed to stutter to him. I didn't think of what else to say. I started backing up the street again, slowly. Oh, come now, don't be shy, I don't bite. He purred at me, then winked. And that was it, I was getting out of there. I turned around and just sprinted for dear life. As I ran up the street, I could clearly hear him running up behind me. I never had felt more panicked before in my life, and I thought my heart was literally going to burst out of my chest. I had to get home, or find some help or something, but by the sound of his feet, I knew he would catch up to me real soon. If I'd stayed on the streets, I'd be a goner, so my only option was to hop a fence and take shortcuts through some people's yards and get to my house. And if he continues to chase me after I jump the fences, then I would try to get someone's attention. I saw my opportunity and took it. I hopped up and over one particularly tall fence. If it weren't for the bright natural light of the moon, I knew I would have lost my sense of direction and would have lost my footing as well. But thankfully, I could see where I was going, and I made it over the fence relatively unharmed. I landed on my hands and feet and quickly scurried up and away. I hopped over several more fences, moving quicker than I thought I could. Never before or since had I been so agile. I didn't hear any noise behind me, and it seemed he might have stopped chasing me. I didn't slow down, though, not until I saw the top of my house. I had never been more happy to see my home. I finally made it to my front door, which I luckily forgot to lock and busted in, slamming the door shut behind me, locking it immediately. I just sat there, huffing and puffing for the longest time. I contemplated calling the police, but I figured it maybe wouldn't do much good. I could give them a description, but he didn't actually do anything to me. Plus, I was just too tired. And somehow, I knew I had lost him for good. I collapsed on the couch a little while later and woke up the next morning to serious aches all over my body. But thankfully, nothing else too serious. It's been a while since this event happened, but I still remember it clearly in my mind. I don't go out late for walks anymore, obviously. 
But if I ever do strange man in the suit, let's not meet. I was 15 and I was at an international art camp. I knew no one beforehand and I was pretty much alone. Until the second day there, I met Anna. She was short and a year older than me. We moved in together to a free room with two beds and became fast friends. We played horror games and watched cartoons together on my laptop. But then she mentioned that she could see ghosts. I was a bit confused by this because I never was that type of person who believed in ghosts. Anna told me that she was followed by several ghosts and they were accepting of me being with her, unlike her last roommate. I was like, psh, okay, whatever floats your boat, and shrugged it off. One night, I woke up to Anna shaking me and she was crying. I asked her what was wrong and she told me that the ghost warned me about a man coming to our door. I said that it was crazy and that no one was coming. This was a private property. She begged me to stay awake and lock the door. I did as she said and I waited a while until she calmed down. An hour or two passes when we hear a sudden noise at our window. Our curtains were covering the window, but we could hear a panting, husky voice coming closer to our door. A hand grabbed our door handle and tried to open it. We sat silent on my bed, listening to the door handle shake. Then it stopped, and a voice of a 40 to 50 year old man called to us. Open up, I need to borrow a phone, I lost my dog. It sounded too made up, but we were silent. After ten minutes of banging on the door and yelling, the man walked away. We were too afraid to call anyone, and we stood awake the rest of the night. A week later, a man was accused of raping three teens in the camp's area. To Anna and her ghosts, thank you for waking me up. To the rapist, let's not meet.